Dear students, today we shall be talking about various signs of sickness in a fish and the pathological changes which take place in a fish when the fish is diseased. So we can go for the diagnosis of the various fish diseases by simple means. But before proceeding, it is my request to you all to like and subscribe to the channel Biolarnia. When we talk about the aquaculture, aquaculture has developed into a science and an industry following the declining trend of capture fisheries sector in last two decades. Now, we don't say aquaculture is a method. Aquaculture is a branch. Nowadays, we simply say aquaculture has turned into an industry, a profitable industry because of the declining trend of the capture fisheries. Now we are moving to the culture fisheries. And in order to increase profitability, what we do, what we are doing, we have turned the semi-intensive to the intensive systems of aquaculture and we have increased the stocking density resulting in increased stress to the animals and consequent incidence of the diseases. So when we are increasing the stocking density, there are chances that the diseases may be transferred fastly in fishes. And disease has now, now become a primary constraint to aquaculture growth and addressing health questions. And it has therefore become urgent requirement for sustaining the growth of the aquatic animal food production. Now, we have to keep vigil on the various diseases of the fishes. How we are, how we can the stop diseases from spreading. If we are vigilant enough to see the signs of a disease in fish, and we are able to segregate those very fishes which are diseased fastly, then we may prevent the disease from spreading to other animals in the intensive aquaculture. Now, first of all, we shall be talking about the certain common symptoms of the fish diseases. When we talk about the sickness in fish, it dwells because of the number of the ailments and diseases but there are certain common external symptoms of a diseased or ailing fish for example it is the duty of every aquaculturist to keep an eye on its fishes to see whether there are unusual movements that the fish is moving unusually there the that is the moment is not a healthy moment not a regular moment then we have to take care and similarly there are many other signs of the disease as well for example if the fish is looking abnormal or it has unhealthy look that is not a shiny look not a glowy glowy look and there is discoloration of fish we may guess that the, there is something something not good about the fish and if there is a film like covering on the skin film like covering on the skin like here and if there are certain swelling spots such as here on the fish or the swelling sp spots on the fish and the fish is looking pale the is uh, looking uh, the gills are looking pale in the fish and white and red spots are there on the uh, white and red spots are uh, there on the gills there is loss of balance and there is abnormal ooze of the fecal matter fecal fecal that is whitish ooze is coming out of the uh, anus of the fish it means that fish is not healthy and another thing if the fish is suffering suffering from certain ectoparasites the fish may usually rub its body along the wall of the water body whether it is aquarium whether it is a pond and many times fish comes on to the surface to gulp the air the movement is not good the there is imbalance in the movement in the fish 
so these are certain symptoms of the fish by which we can we can uh, clearly see that there is something unhealthy about a fish the, the fish is suffering from the certain kind of disease and we should segregate those very fish and we should we should take proper care now we shall be talking about the by just looking at the various um, um, you can say um, morphological features that the fish is suffering from for example if there are holes near the head or there is eye fluke we can look all these very conditions morphologically by by having a look at the at the morphological condition of the fish and the eyes are cloudy and bulgy um, bulging there is cotton like cotton like substances they are present on the body or the skin or scales or there may be certain you can say the sh uh, gray sheen over the body or there may be many a times the fluke flukes on the body or many a times what we see we see lymphocystis we see lymphocystis we see hemorrhage in in the uh, caudal fin or other fins or on the skin we many a times can see the fin rot that may be because of certain diseases or maybe because of certain pathogens many a times we see the cotton like substance on the mouth that may be because of the mouth fungus the gills may be gills may be uh, inflamed they may be uh, they may be excessive red in blood there may be hemorrhage we may say that it gill in the gills are suffering from the gill flukes or the inflamed gills we may many a times see various white spots on the fish we may see many a times certain other characteristic feature which which can be dropsy many a times we notice certain worms on the skin that can be anchor worm we many a times see ulcers on the skin or we many a times can see the um, lice many times we see the um, the anchor worm many a times we can see the lice that is argulus and many a times the intestinal worms they can be seen trailing out of the anus and many a times the gold spots can be seen on the body that all are indication that the that the fish is suffering from certain kind of disease now let us have a have a fast look at the various pathological changes in the tissues of the fish now the first important pathological condition is spongiosis of epidermis this is the outcome of inflammatory response of the individual cells in the malpighian layer which becomes separated by the tissue fluid and intracellular edema so what happens in this very case the there is a fluid in the in the squamous tissue and they result in the pushing apart the squamous cells and that leads to the spongiosis and this condition reflects the pathological lesion deeper in the dermis and the epidermal cells eventually die following the necrosis of the cytoplasm and nucleus so what happens in this very case the inflammation occurs individual cells in the malpighian layer become separated by the tissue fluid and that leads to the intercellular edema and it reflects a pathological condition deeper in the dermis which leads to necrosis of the cytoplasm and the nucleus then second we know it by the name of the hyperplasia of epidermis what happens in this very case here in this very figure we are seeing the epidermal hyperplasia in the in the caudal uh, fin of the koi carp that is satna scarpio the epidermis shows proliferation at all levels it is caused generally by number of the pollutants hormones as well as the viruses that we shall be dealing later on that one by one we shall be discussing the vi uh, viral diseases bacterial diseases fungal diseases protozoan diseases then fungal um, we, certain miscellaneous diseases are uh, worm diseases 
so that we shall be discussing later on but here in we are just looking at the seeing at the or discussing about the uh, about the pathological conditions what can happen um, because of the certain pollutants hormones and viruses uh, that is hyperplasia of epidermis that may be because of the hormones and viruses then ulceration is another important pathological condition in this very case epidermis tends to get separated from the basement membrane and this is caused by necrosis you are seeing here in this very picture that the necrosis of the adjacent dermis and in turn by certain pathogens as well that can be because of the saprolegnia parasitica and the necrosis of the skin uh, is uh, clearly visible in this very picture then that is the ulceration of the epidermis then dermatitis many a times we see that exudates contain necrotic debris pathogen and fibrin such lesions rupture releasing the infectious pathogens into the water and that can be furunculosis as well now what happens in the case of dermatitis stratum spongiosum which is the upper layer stratum spongiosum which is the upper layer and hypodermis which is the which is the lower layer and uh, uh, the middle layer that is the stratum compactum the this very stratum compactum that is the middle layer it is poor in vascular supply and which is not generally affected but it is the stratum spongiosum and hypodermis that is that is commonly affected in the case of dermatitis the inflammatory response is due to bacterial lesion that can be because of the bacteria vascular infiltration is conspicuous in this very case so what happens in the case of dermatitis it is the stratum spongiosum and the hypodermis layer which is mainly affected um and the stratum compactum which is the middle layer that is not commonly affected um, uh, um, because of the um, because of the poor vascular um, supply um, the inflammation occurs may it can be because of the bacterial lesion as well as well and the vascular inf infiltration is conspicuous then we do have the anemia as we all know that when we say that the um, less hemoglobin in the uh, body or the blood we refers to the hemo anemia and this represents the considerable reduction in the total amount of the hemoglobin carrying the red blood corpuscles leading to consequently leading consequently to the reduction in the oxygen transport capacity of the blood so this is this can be caused by pathogens or uh, which uh, which attack the hemopoietic tissues of the kidney and spleen or it may be because of malfunctioning of the tissues that may be hypoplastic conditions as well so it is simply the considerable reduction in the amount of hemoglobin carrying the red blood corpuscles so the next uh, pathological condition is leukemia so this is a neoplastic origin that is resulting in the total um, resulting in the increase in the total amount of leukocytes in the blood so here in normal blood we are seeing that there is there are the normal leukocytes but in the case of the um, leukemia we see that the um, excessive proliferation excessive increase in the in the leukemia cells then we do have another pathological condition we call it as the neoplasia so this is the formation of the tumors that can be benign or that can be malignant and uh, in this very effective tissue um, uh, can, it can be because of various factors such as it can be because of viruses toxins hormones or uh, other factors and the common tumors of the fish they include papilloma of the skin number 1 it is the papilloma of the skin or it can be carcinoma of the oral mucosa including lips or it can be uh, adenoma of thyroid and liver and it can be fibroma of the connective tissue it can be lipoma of the fibrous tissue it can be leiomyoma of the smooth muscles it can be rhabdomyoma of striated muscles and it can be chondroma of the cartilage and osteoma of the bones and so on 
so new placia leads to the excessive growth of the cells and if those very excessive growth of the cells are in different organs they may be categorized differently such as if they are in the bones we call it as a osteoma if in the cartilage we call it as a chondroma and if in this uh, in the case of smooth muscles uh, um, sorry uh, rhabdoma if it is in the case of striated muscles chondroma in the case of cartilage and similarly lipoma in the case of fibrous tissue so they are named uh, according to the tissue they affect then we do have the lamellar edema of the gills what happens in this very case there is excessive edematous separation of the gill epithelial lining and this is followed by cellular necrosis in the epithelium so when we say cellular necrosis in the epithelium what happens in this very case the chemical pollutants and irritants such as pesticides ddt heavy metals formalin they cause lesions so pathological change is best shown at the base of the secondary lamella owing to the increased capillary permeability and there is excessive or extensive edematous separation of the gill epithelial lining leading to the necrosis leading to necrosis of epithelium epithelium so that can be because of the lamellar edema of the gills so then we do have another pathological condition we call it the visceral granuloma of the gut small white nodules appear in the gut such as here it these are seen small white nodules they appear in the gut in the chronic infection of the mycobacterium in the farm fishes so if the fishes are infected by the mycobacterium these very white nodules they generally appear we call them as the visceral granuloma of the gut then many times uh, cirrhosis of the liver it is one of the important pathological conditions and it is all because of the toxic agents which cause the focal or extensive necrosis and the nuclei become pycnotic and the cytoplasm becomes vacuolated and mostly first of all there is a fatty liver condition and then it turns out to be the necrotic so dietary toxicity in the farm fishes produces cirrhosis which represents an advanced condition of hepatocellular damage and fibrosis occurs especially in the parabellary connective tissue and the virus diseases produce the focal necrosis many a times so it is the fibrosis which especially occurs in the parabellary connective tissue and the virus diseases they produce the focal necrosis wherever ever the virus affects then we do have the granulonephrites as the name indicates that it is the inflammation of the uh, glomerulus so we call it as a glomerulonephrites so diabetic condition and the bacterial and the parasitic diseases they produce this very pathological change and it is very often in kidney of the old fishes mostly old kidneys are uh, old fishes are affected and the thickening of the bowman's capsule occurs on the glomerular tuft and the uh, glomerular basement membrane and later on fibrosis may follow so first of all there is the thickening of the bowman's capsule and the glomerular tuft which results in the glomerulonephrites of the kidney then we do have the necrosis in the whirling disease of the ear so necrosis in the whirling whirling disease so mainly the whirling disease uh, is caused by where in the uh, where in the fish um, uh, swims abnormally in a whirl like fashion and mostly it is caused by the um, the myxosoma cerebralis mostly a pathogen called as myxosoma cerebralis but many times there is deformation uh, of the bones as well it is all um, uh, it causes the loss of the balance and control of fishes suffering from the whirling disease the loss of the balance is caused and uh, the uh, balance and the control in fishes is lost and the fish swims in an abnormal manner and this very myxosoma cerebralis it produces the necrosis of the bone and cut cartilage resulting in the deformation of the canals as well so you are seeing here in this very picture that there is deformity of the bones as well and the and this very deformity of the bone is also result of the abnormal uh, swimming behavior of the fish then we do have the pathological changes in the lateral line organs so we all know that the lateral line organs are one of the important sense organs in the in the fishes 
and the number of the pollutants such as heavy metals pesticides detergents hydrocarbons they produce wide variety of pathological changes including edema spongiosis necrosis and sloughing that is the just um, tearing off and even hyper and metaplasia of the sensory epithelium so when there occurs the um, changes um, such as edema spongiosis necrosis sloughing um, sloughing of the layers and the metaplasia or hyperplasia so it leads to the um, changes in the lateral line organs as well then cataract of the eye is also important feature cataract of the eye this is a common uh, case whenever we see a fish that is visible even um, even uh, from a distance as well that the fish eye is not so shiny it is just a murky so this condition cause among the formed fishes and it is because of the parasite called as diplostomum uh, spathicern so um, this can be because of the um, parasite as well and however cataract may be caused by variety of the other factors including diabetes as well so it can be because of the parasite that is diplostomum or it can be because of the various other factors such as diabetes in the case of the fish then another pathological condition is lesions of the muscles so muscle is favorable for the number of the parasites which produce different types of the lesions lernia is one of the crustacean lernia lernia is a crustacean which causes the liquefactive the um, liquefactive necrosis in case of the fishes and metacercarian larval stages of the cryptocotyle it also produces the fibrosis and nematodes um, many often they invade the muscles after the death of the fish um, from the peritoneum and they cause the granulomata as well so lesions of this uh, muscles is also important pathological conditions which is an indication of the fish disease then hemorrhage in testes this is commonly excited in tuberculosis and furunculosis so in the case of tuberculosis and furunculosis we see a condition where in the um, hemorrhage occurs in the case of testes we see the hemorrhage hemorrhage in testes um uh, and the uh, fish is not able to reproduce or uh, form the gametes then sterility is in ovary is also important pathological condition and it can be because of the dietary deficiency and disease and the two factors uh, they produce this pathological change it can be atresia that is failure to produce primary oocytes uh, is one of the factor that is atresia and reabsorption of the mature ova is brought about the phagocytotic activity of macrophages so it can be because of atresia and it can be because of the phagocytotic activity of the macrophages resulting in the reabsorption of the mature ova and the protozoan uh, listophora plistophora ovary it also is responsible for the necrosis cyst formation and fibrosis in the ovary of noti megonus a cultivated bait fish and ligula ligula and cystocephalus ligula and cystocephalus infestation and when heavy exerts um, pressure from the abdomen to prevent ovarian growth so when the uh, when the infestation of the um, ligula and cystocephalus is heavy it exerts pressure from the abdomen to prevent the ovarian growth so leading to the sterility of the ovary as well so it can be because of the various dietary deficiency disease dietary deficiency or it can be because of the various disease producing factors such as atresia and reabsorption of the mature ov uh, ova by phagocytotic activity or it can be because of the protozoan uh, parasite that is plistophora ovary or um, it can be because of the ligula and cystocephalus uh, infestation which exert pressure on the abdomen to prevent the ovarian growth then we shall be discussing one by one the various parasitic diseases in fish which can be categorized as viral diseases bacterial diseases fungal diseases protozoan diseases Uh, diseases caused by copepod diseases caused by halimens diseases caused by annelids and mollusks and there are certain diseases which we call them as the nutritional diseases nutritional diseases 
and certain which are because of the physicochemical factors of the water we call them we mainly know by the name of miscellaneous miscellaneous diseases so besides viral diseases bacterial diseases fungal diseases protozoan diseases um, diseases caused by copepod by helminth annelid mollusca there are certain other diseases we categorize them as the miscellaneous diseases and certain diseases which are because of the deficiency of the certain nutritional uh, you can say components and then they are categorized as the nutritional diseases that we shall be discussing one by one that's all for today next time we shall be dealing with the viral diseases in fish very soon thank you thank you very much